I can introduce myself first. So um, my name is Sebastian. I'm currently in Atlanta because I'm on the SCAD Atlanta campus. I'm a senior in industrial design. I'm currently working on my senior thesis as well. And I'm originally from Germany. And yeah, I like sketching. Um, I've done it a lot in the past four years being here. And I want to share some basic things that I've learned so far um, for you to be able to put your ideas on paper. So yeah, I think it's a good opportunity to learn something about product sketching and what it, what it can do for you and your process of ideation may be related to product or not. I think it's, it's useful for every uh, single major that SCAD offers in some way. So yeah, let's get started. Yes, uh, first of all, I want to talk about a couple of materials um, that I use for myself, but um, that can be used by many others too. So these are the three basic ones for product sketching. Pencils, of course, um, if you want to draw, you definitely need a pencil of some sort. But I also use ballpoint pens. The ones from Vic um, are good to use. I use some, some fine liners like um, the pit artist pens I have here. Um, and then I also use markers. These are all materials that I'm going to use today in the demo later on. Um, I also have some rulers here. I have some French curves, which I'm going to talk about a little bit more later. And I also have a couple of different papers, um, but usually just printing paper is fine as long as you don't use markers for sketching because the markers, um, I use some extra paper for them because they, they tend to like the paper, the regular printing paper tends to suck in a lot of the ink of the markers, so they dry out quite fast. So I have marker paper here um, to, the, to do the demo on as well. Yeah, those are the three basic ones. Um, very self-explanatory, but what can you actually do with these? Um, here we have some ideation sketches, which is something I'm gonna focus on today for a little bit. There's many different ways where you can start product sketching, but I think ideation, especially 2D, which you see in the middle, um, this kind of like bottle shapes are mostly in a 2D um, form. But then on the left side, you have some more 3D forms. And on the right side, it's even a bit more complex with a lot of color and even a composition. Um, you see on the right side, there's like, there's a lot of different um, drawings that are um, nicely arranged, but that is not how it looks on paper, actually. So that is scanned in and then assembled in Photoshop or something similar in order to make it look nice. Um, if you want to pay particular emphasis on that, um, that is fine, but it's very hard to like get into ideation and produce such like nicely composed pages because that because that is not really the intent. Um, in ideation sketching, I think the, the biggest part of ideation sketching is get something on paper very fast um, and just get your mind going about what you, whatever you, you are about to sketch. So let's take the middle page again that you can see here. Um, I think the task was to sketch a bottle um, design, and there's many different ways you can go about this, but since it's a very um, simple shape, that is mostly defined by its silhouette. It's, it's very um, beneficial to do 2D sketches similar um, to shoe design, for example, or anything that is like very defined and distinguishable by, their, by its silhouette simply. Um, so that is a very a good and easy way to start um, ideation sketching if you're not that comfortable with thinking in 3D, which I'm gonna talk about in a second as well. Um, just to get something down on paper. On the left side, you can see some other ideation sketches, which are a bit more complex in terms of their um, three-dimensionality. So you can see a couple of um, lines that are just there to guide um, the viewer, but also the sketcher in this case, to just understand the 3D form and put it on a 2D flat surface like the paper. Um, but I think it really is successful in the way um, that the sketches are done with this like very small in, um, indication of shadows as well. And then also you can see um, some of the line weight, which is also very important to kind of make the form stand out. So usually the outline of the form is a little bit thicker 
which um, helps defining the shape and uh, helps it read very well. Cool. That's the first stage. Um, the second stage would be um, concept sketches or rendered sketches, or like hero shot sketches. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of different names that you can use for this, but usually I I refer to it as a concept page because it is more um, there to like describe the the things that the concept does, um, that the product does, that you sketch on paper. So, for example, on the right side, you can see somewhat of like a a tea, like a, a pot for tea or like some other beverages. Um, and you can see a couple of different views. It's more nicely arranged. And on the left side, you can even see um, the product in use. So the, the cheese is kind of indicated on the top and how it would be um, used um, in this specific case. So it's more nicely arranged um, page. What also stands out is, is there's one product um, drawing that's in color and the rest is just line um, work, which is also um, or which also distinguishes the the emphasis on different um, areas of the paper. It's mu much bigger the actual like nicely rendered and nicely composed um, item um, is definitely what stands out. But then there's this supporting images um, that kind of explain more what it does, how it's uh, created, how like what components um, the product has. Um, and obviously some in, in like um, some marks and like um, some words, some indications are used as well to describe the product further, which you usually don't see very much on ideation sketches. So you don't really, oh, <laughs> right. So you don't really explain much more to the product since the ideation sketches are something that is mostly seen by yourself, by the, by the designer or sketcher themselves and not really to presented to someone else. So I think the hero shot is more the sketch that you would take into a presentation to uh, talk about your concept and show it and share it with others. And then I think the th third stage is what I call more the artistic sketching, um, which is the fully rendered sketch, um, very nicely done. Like you can see on the right side, it almost looks photorealistic, um, takes much more skill um, and time, obviously, to finish such sketches. Um, and for me personally, I don't think they're very beneficial um, for the design process necessarily to like get to a final design, but it's more to kind of show off the final work, um, kind of like this furniture piece in the middle. It just looks very nice. You can understand what the product is, um, but to present it to someone else, like share the concept and like the idea behind it, I think it's not the most um, beneficial thing to use. But it just, of, of course, it just looks very nice and um, is always nice to have um, as an addition to ideation and concept sketches, um, just to show how the final thing would look like if you don't have the chance to use, for example, 3D modeling to actually like model it very nicely and apply materials. Um, that is a very good um, alternative way to share a very like high-end image of your product. Awesome. When it comes to materials, um, this is something I'm not going to focus as much on today, but I just wanted to share um, some possibilities that are out there that you can explore by yourself. And in the end, if we have time, I'm definitely going to do a couple of these just to show you how, um, for example, more rough materials, like you can see on the right in this like cylinder shape on the top left. It's a more rough surface that doesn't reflect as much of the environment. But then right below it, it's a very shiny surface. Uh, and that can sometimes be very beneficial um, if the material is something that's very like distinct about the product, like for example, a vase that is out of glass or something. Um, then it can be very beneficial to render the, the materials. But like I said before, it always takes a lot of time and skill. For example, in the middle, you see this wood that even has this like slight reflection on the top. Um, it just takes much more time. And in terms of sketching something to like get to the final concept, it's not as useful and beneficial as like just getting quickly something down on paper. Um, but when it gets to the further stages in the design process, and if you want to explore a couple different um, alternatives for the materials of the product, 
you can definitely explore um, things like that. But also, I think what what is somewhat of a barrier to this is that you need to obviously have the, the colors and the markers in order to do this very nicely. Um, colored pencil sometimes works fine too, but usually I just sketch with a pencil and a grayscale markers at the most and maybe a ballpoint pen, but that's really it um, in order to like utilize sketching in the way I need it, which is form exploration, just ideation, um, creating some different alternatives and routes, which I then can um, explore further in the design process. Awesome. Next slide. Cool. What will I do today? Um, here's a couple of um, key words that um, explain something that I will do today. I will start with some uh, geometric shapes like a cube, um, just to give you this mindset of 3D thinking, although it's on, to, on, on a surface like a paper, um, which usually people think it's a 2D exercise, but I think for, especially for product design sketching, it's, it's really not, it's 3D. Um, and the more you can think and, and train yourself to think in 3D, I think the more successful are your sketches um, in the end. So um, I'm gonna do a couple of basic exercises to get you in this mindset of 3D form. Um, then we're gonna manipulate that form, rounding the corners, having cut throughs and like different um, just features on the cube or, or on the 3D form itself in order to just like give it a little more detail and a little more complexity. Um, yeah, that's what we're gonna start with. We can all draw along. In the next phase today, we're gonna jump into some ideation, especially morphology. I think the, yeah, um, I think the, um, the ideation pages showed that very well. It's mainly surrounding one idea that you start with, but then you start to like manipulate the form in different ways, which can be referred to as morphology because it really changes the shape uh, step by step. I think that's a very good attempt to do it um, because it still like focuses on this one idea and then you can jump to the next once you have explored very different um, like um, forms for this one um, product and that might spark some other ideas um, but we'll get to that later when I start sketching. Yeah, 2D and 3D both um, is something that we're gonna see today. I think um, 2D is very good for some um, like basic forms and some um, specific product categories, like, like I said, shoe design or even like bottles and beverages, um, container, stuff like that. Um, but I think there are also some products that are much more um, successful on paper if it's drawn in 3D right away. Um, and also like some applications of sketching, I think require a 3D approach right away, just because of you, you wanna explore how things are made and how, how things sometimes are assembled or like different parts of the product. And that's something you don't really see very well in a 2D perspective. So we're gonna do both of them today. And here are some additional resources that you can use. Of course, you can always contact me. My email is on this sheet as well, and the presentation is gonna be recorded and shared afterwards. But I'm gonna um, share some more um, links as well. You can see here on the left, um, external resources. I look a lot on Pinterest, Behance, and Instagram. That's where I get most of my inspiration from when it comes to product sketching not necessarily the products themselves, but more like the style and like the techniques that I um, still try to master. I think it's, it's an ongoing process. And one very successful um, industrial designer, his name is Marius Kindler. Um, he's currently in Sweden at the Umea Design School. And he has a website on, or an Instagram account where he shares a lot of his sketching work. And it's just amazing to see what you can do on paper um, he does a lot with um, digital sketching as well. So he would start out on paper and then just take a photo and take it into Procreate or Illustrator, Photoshop, um, Sketchbook Pro. There's so many different digital um, sketching like um, programs that you can use as well to like push, especially the materials because you can just like manipulate it so much faster and better than on paper, if, especially if you're a beginner and you start um, 
yeah, maybe today even with sketching. Yeah, just check them out. I think it's very worthwhile um, to check all these resources out. Um, and then on the right side, of, of course, you can see some more sessions that is um, that are going to take place, I think, today as well and, and like the upcoming week. Um, but I think so. Okay. We can more to that. <laughs> Let me help you out with that. So the SolidWorks session will be taking place tomorrow, same time, 3 p.m. Um, and then the making a real thing, which is 3D printing, uh, it's prototyping is going to be held on Wednesday at 3 p.m. And I will be hosting that one. I recommend if anyone is in this uh, is interested in going there to follow along with all the IDSA workshops. So sketch with Sebastian today, go make your uh, model tomorrow with Ovadia. And then on Wednesday, come meet with me and we can make that a real thing and see it all come into the real world. Okay, with that, I'm gonna stop share and we can get started. All right, one second. I just need to set up my camera, my second one to share the sketch work. Um, um, while we're waiting, is anyone interested in industrial design and isn't an industrial design major? Not on your laugh. I am number one fun. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, before we can start, we, before we start, we can all share maybe our majors and like our backgrounds. So I can also gauge maybe what like experiences you have with sketching so far. Um, that'd be good simply to like see what I can maybe skip or go over a little faster. Um, that'd be awesome. Um, I guess we can just start. Uh, yeah. Well, I am Daniela from the Atlanta campus, and I am um, industrial design, and I know Sebastian very well. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I want to know about everyone else that's connected. I can go next. I am also industrial design. Um, oh, Stephanie, you unmuted. You want to go? Yeah, I wanted to go, but it's fine. No, go ahead. Okay, um, I'm Stephanie and I'm at the Atlanta campus. I'm a film major, so yeah, it's kind of different <laughs> from industrial design, but yeah. Great to have you in this workshop. Thanks. Um, Celine, would you like to go? Or not, Arjun. <laughs> Arjun, I know you, Goodbye. what the heck? <laughs> All right. Well, Sebastian, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. We can start. Do you want to pin the uh, mm -hmm. second camera so you can see better? Uh -huh. Or is it is it doing? Can you do it? I think I'm still seeing. Oh, you, everyone needs to pin it on their own screen. Oh, okay. So if you want to pin the second camera that's showing the paper in my hands right now, <laughs> um, that would be awesome. So you can go along. I'm gonna start with um, a warm up page. That's something I usually do if I have a bigger sketching session going on. Um, it's really uh, good to just like get in the mindset of, of product sketching, since I think especially compared to drawing that we learn at SCAD in the couple first um, quarters, um, it's very different because it's it's much faster, it's very fast paced, and you really wanna go and like get your hands and arms loose. So I'm usually not holding the pencil very tight, but very loose like this, um, just to like have my full arm rotation um, going on on the page. Um, and create like very clean and very um, nice looking lines. Also, um, something that I can, like I saw myself doing in the early stages and I'm still um, trying to avoid that sometimes is doing too much lines on a single like 
item or a single form because it, it's just even if it's not a right line that you see you want to correct it um try and, and stay away from that because it's just going to make the sketch a little messier and less readable for the viewer in the end so um even if it's not the perfect line that you do don't worry you can either start again um right do it right next to it uh, to the sketch you just did or you can trace it even after um, by just putting another paper on top and then correcting. I think that's the much better practice because it just keeps your sketches clean. Um, and I think the viewer themselves, they, they already um, always have a bit more of um, ability to finish what you produce on paper than you think. So they, they will, um, or their brains will finish the sketch for you. I think that's what we something we learn in, in the drawing classes as well. Um, so I'm I'm usually trying to avoid making too much detail and just like indicating something. So um, to start off, what I usually do, I draw two points and you can all draw along with me um, and just try to connect them in a single straight line. Um, don't worry if you don't miss. Uh, if you miss the point um, or if it's a bit wonky in the beginning, but the more you do, the better um, those lines are going to become. And you just do a couple just to get you in the mindset. And you can see how fast I draw. Like it's not, I'm not trying to like connect it very accurately, um, but I draw very fast and, and like very uh, committed. And you can even vary some of the line weights. Um, you can, kind of see how this is like fading out a little bit. I think that can be helpful in design sketching as well. I can show that later. Um, but just to keep you, make you comfortable on the page and with the um, medium you draw with. I'm using a pencil right now, but you can also use a ballpoint pen or something else that you have on hand. Um, if we finish that, um, we can go ahead and just turn the page. That's something you're going to see as well. Um, I'm going to turn the page a lot because I'm like very comfortable in one specific position. Um, I'm usually drawing either from the top down or from the like right um, bottom corner to the left top, but that's like my most comfortable uh, drawing position. So I'm trying if I can um, to rotate the paper as much as I can to like keep that position um, in place because it just helps me to, to make clean lines. And then uh, the next step is going to be uh, three points that you're going to connect in an arc. So um, just try and like do an arc and hit all three points, um, start to finish. Um, I'm usually a little below, um, as you notice here. That's fine. Um, it's just to like get you um, as close as possible and keep you, like I said, very consistent and very. Um, fast and, and clean. Okay, sounds good. So next one is already jumping into shapes, but 2D. Um, I'm usually starting off with a couple of squares. So um, you can do points, but I usually start with a line and then I see how long it is. And then I just go um, parallel to it. And then if it's a little too long, you can still correct that with the other lines, um, but just try and keep it as a as a square as much as possible. And it doesn't really matter um, to like finish the line exactly where they intersect, um, as long as it still like reads as a square and like not something like this. Um, obviously, that's fine. Um, just a couple more. You can do rectangles as well. Um, and you notice again, I'm turning the page um, just to like keep this motion that I'm very comfortable with um, going. So you can just do a couple of squares and rectangles, and then we're going to jump into some curved forms already. Um, triangles are fine too. Um, put this as a guiding line because the triangles are usually in design if you draw a 2D shape, um, either symmetrical um, to start off with. So you can draw this middle line and then go um, off of each side and then connect them at the bottom. Um, but there's so many ways to go about this. Cool. So um, next one would be ellipses and circles. I think the hardest form to draw is a circle. Um, so I'm going to start off with some ellipses. Uh, and this, what I'm doing here, um, 
is I'm rotating my pencil um, over the page, kind of hovering over the page, and then kind of seeing the form without drawing it. I think that helps a lot to visualize it on the page and help it like turn out very clean. And um, so you don't have to go around so much. So I'm gonna start. And what I usually do, I do like a couple rotations um, and then I lift off again. So that's kind of how I do the ellipses. Um, it keeps like the sketchy touch to it. Don't try and do too much um, like rounds and rotations because it's gonna um, look a little messy if it's too many um, lines overlapping each other, but I think a couple are fine just to get this like sketchiness um, on the paper a little bit. I think that's a distinct style of um, product sketching is that it looks very dynamic and sketchy, um, let, un, let, yet clean and um, yeah, just like very, very um, defined. Cool. Um, now circles, I think that's the hardest one. Oh, also you can, um, as a guideline, you can all, always like draw this middle section line. And then what people do is they, they put like this angled line on top, which defines basically the borders of the ellipse. I think that helps to visualize it. Okay, circles is really um, something you have to practice to like master it. Um, obviously they're not gonna turn out perfect every time um, and they don't have to, um, and you will see that later on. But what I'll do, same thing, I'll just visualize it without um, sketching it just to get like the, the scale and like the, the flow going. And then at some point I'm just getting down on paper, I think that turned out nicely. And then just do a couple very quick circles, um, small and big ones. I usually, I have one size. I think this size is the one that I usually am comfortable with. Um, and you will find that size, but you can do smaller ones. The more you vary, um, the better you're gonna get. Some very big ones. Um, some smaller ones. That's fine. Cool. That's usually how my warm-up page looks. Um, yeah, nothing really um, depicting. I think it's it's just a good way to start um, getting in the mindset of the drawing. Awesome. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw a couple of basic shapes, and I'm going to explain some different shading techniques. I'm going to start out with pencil again. Use another one so I don't have to shorten this one. Um, and then we're going to jump into marker too. So I'm going to start off with a cube and we're going to jump into the 3D space. Um, you can think of a, of a cube as something that starts out with a square, um, kind of like this, like we, we've drawn before. So it always adds up on, on things that you did before. Um, so the more basic you start off with, I think the more. Um, skills you build over time. So I think it's very useful to start off with those very simple um, exercises like we just did, and then just build it up slowly um, to be comfortable. All right, so a square, if you look at it from the front, um, this could be in perspective in space um, if you stand right in front of it, but then you can start and rotate the page, uh, the, the square on the page, or like the cube on the page. So if you basically shift it um, a little bit, it's going to look something like this. Um, so this is um, basically this is the ground level. And if you shift the cube a little bit, um, there's going to be, it's a two point perspective. So one line is, is basically following this way and one line is this way. So the, the vanishing points would be somewhere here. Um, that's the most basic like approach of how you can think of this. And the, you can take it way further. Like you can just um, alternate the way you rotate the sketch um, or the cube on the page. So we can um, start off with like seeing it in 3D um, rather than just this like very simple um, two point perspective like this. And I think it's a very good exercise to um, kind of keep this 3D um, thinking going. Because like what people, I think, in product sketching are le like least comfortable with is to put a 3D form accurately on the 2D page um, because they can like 
cannot often cannot wrap their head around like um, a 3D form and how it's like seen in perspective too well. But if you start with a very simple form like a cube, I think you can um, quickly gain that understanding of the perspective. So these lines basically are at the top, they are vanishing somewhere far off the page um, in the background in the vanishing point. And this line is following that as well. And same thing on this side, but then what's different to the first one we drew is that it's a three point perspective. So this one is going down into a vanishing point as well. And that's usually the, like the, the basic setup of how product design sketching is done. It's a three point perspective and it makes the product look very dynamic and look like very three dimensional because it's this point here that appears to be as like the closest to you and all the other points are at least like they appear it's the illusion that they are a little further back on the page basically and that's what you want to achieve ultimately so we can just do a couple more um basic cubes this one i'm going to draw that is seen from the bottom and you notice i'm rotating the page quite a bit so as I go, you can see I draw this line a bit too long, so I correct it right away. And it doesn't even matter if it is too long, as long as you finish the form and you can touch it up a little bit in the end. Um, basically, it should like highlight the form a little bit. Um, I noted that on the ideation um, page in the presentation, that sometimes the outline is a little heavier than the other lines inside, basically, which makes it stand out a little more from the page, like so. Yeah, um, I'll just keep going. You can draw a couple of different cubes um, just to practice, but then I'm going to start shading them in um, after I've finished. So I'm going to do maybe three or four different cubes, and then I'm going to talk about shading a little bit. Seb, are you using a 2B or like what? This is a 5B. Um, okay. Yeah, it doesn't really matter as long as it's on the B range. Um, H is just too firm. And if you want to press harder, um, it might rip the paper or something or just, it's it's good to have a B because it, you can vary the line weight so much easier than with yeah. an H. Um, I've never tried sketching with pen pencil like this before <laughs> and i like oh, yeah cool. i always did like ball pump pen <laughs> mm -hmm. strong yeah, like that's why i like pencil because you can vary the line weight so easy right um with ballpoint pen it's still doable um just because it's ink it's a little harder so you can see kind of here how the heaviest line weight is in the front here and i can even um increase that a little bit and it just makes the, the sketch a little more dynamic because you want to set a focal point on the product that you sketch. So wherever you want to put a highlight or basically um, make the viewer look at, um, that's going to be where the, like the heaviest line is going to be or the most detail too later on. So this side is really not as important to understand the form or this, this area than um, the front right here. And you want to keep the, the heaviest lines in wherever you want to draw the attention to. And I think a cube is obviously a simple example to that, but um, think about maybe buttons on a product. Um, they are usually more because they're like, because they're so detailed and like it's a small detail on the product. It's, it makes your eye drawn towards that just because there's more going on than on a flat plane surface. And that's this, the exact same um, theory behind it, because you, where, where there's more on the page, your, your eye is going to be drawn towards automatically. And that's what you basically take to as an advantage to make the sketch look nicer. 
All right, so I'm gonna leave it with the two. Um, talking about um, shade. So I always start off with imagining, sorry about the shadow here and the light. I hope it doesn't distract as much. Um, I always start with imagining a light source. So just as the light, the sun is coming through the... Oops. No worries. <laughs> um, so I imagine where the light is coming from. So similar to the sun now drawing a shadow on my desk through the window because it's very low, um, the light source is going to define where the shadows are going to go and how dark the shadows are going to be. So if the light is coming from here, from the top, um, like left side top, this um, surface is going to be the lightest. This is going to have like a middle value, and this is going to be the darkest because it's obviously not facing the light source. And then the shadow or the cube is going to throw a shadow if we imagine this to be grounded on like a, a plane, which you can just simply indicate by two lines. Um, and it like immediately is set on a plane rather than just floating on the page, which is helpful for some products, not all of them. Um, but I think it's a good way to think about it. And it's super easy to do. Simply draw a couple of lines um, and it's set there. But it's going to draw um, a shadow on the page similar to like, like this. Um, kind of like this. Because you can imagine the light source is going to hit all the edges of the product and kind of throw them like down onto the surface, kind of like this. Um, it's not as accurate, but it doesn't have to be 100% in order to understand, OK, this is a shadow. And it just looks somewhat accurate to um, the viewer. So I'm going to start off with the middle value. I'm going to leave the top white. Um, I'm going to start the middle value just by hatching in a very light um, manner. So try and keep the lines um, as like uniform as possible and as, as parallel. And this is already enough to kind of indicate the middle value. Um, you can do this very, very quickly. Um, it doesn't matter if it overlaps a little bit. I can, you know, I think it's hard to see right now, but my lines are a little overlapping um, the edge. But as long as it's not as much, um, it's fine. And then I can go in and do the same thing on this side, um, but a little bit darker. So I just press harder, um, but do essentially do the same thing. And the key to this is really keeping the lines the same darkness all throughout. And there you have a shaded cube. Um, and you can do the same, like kind of like I sketched um, the shadow on the ground. It's a little hard to do it for more complex shapes. But as long as it's, because sometimes it's very diffused, um, this you can see here, my um, the shadow and the light of the sun is very distinct. But I think in um, in like the, day, the daylight, I think it's a very diffused shadow. So you can kind of see my hand right now. It's not exactly the same um, form, but it's a little blurry. So it doesn't really matter as long as it's as roughly the shape of what it is um, in the form um, to make it understandable. So we're just going to do this very dark. And you can hatch it in or just like scribble it in like this. Um, and it's going to look like nicest if all the strokes are in one direction. You can touch that up a little bit. Um, and then to make it a little more understanding, easy to understand, you can make this bottom line a little firmer. Maybe this one too. Just to not lose the shape of the form you just drew or sketched. Kind of like this. Yeah. And then you can touch up the lines a little bit. Um, Cool. Similar to this one, um, I'm going to do a slightly different technique. Um, let me sharpen my pencil very quick. <laughs> um, now I'm going to put a little more emphasis on, um, let's say, the, the lines and how they like affect the form. Because usually what happens in, 
what happens in real life is the whole surface is not exactly lit the same way. So you can think of this as um, kind of like this. Um, I think in Photoshop, you can do it as well. Um, if you want to do digital sketching, it's a gradient. So it usually goes from darkest at the bottom to lighter um, in the like corner where the light hits. So let's say it's the same light source again, coming from this like top left. Um, this is going to still be the darkest um, of the three planes on the cube. But what I'm going to do is, because there might be some other objects that reflect light, I'm going to do this um, corner the darkest and this the lightest. So the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to start the, sh uh, the hatching like this, um, because I can then manipulate it a little bit easier. And I'm going to start with very like dense and um, heavy lines and it's gonna fade out a little bit towards the top. And you can do that by pressing lighter or just like increasing the, the space between the strokes, kind of like this. And I have to touch it on the bottom a little bit, kind of like this. And you can already see it looks a little more sophisticated because it's this gradient going on um, like so. And you can do the same thing not as harsh on this side. Like this. And then usually on the top, um, you want to highlight this like front corner, like I said. You can do this by just drawing them a little bit firmer. And then slightly shading the back of the top plane, kind of like this. And this is going to make the front a little stand out because it's the lightest part. Um, yeah, I'm not going to do the, the ground shadow. I think we can jump to the next exercise. Um, but just to give you a basic understanding of how um, shadows work, um, always like imagine the light source first because that's going to start your thinking of how the light is going to hit the 3D form. And then you can think about, OK, how is, is that affecting the shape and how it's going to produce shadows on the shape or even shadows on the ground based on the shape. Cool. Next one would be a cylinder. So um, for the cylinder, we're going to use two ellipses. One is quite shallow, the top one, like this. And then because it's in perspective, the bottom one is going to be a little more narrow but wider. So it's it's more like a circle, kind of like this. And this is going to distort it quite a lot because it's much smaller. Um, but you just connect the two um, kind of like this. And because it's so much like distortion right now, it almost looks like a, a part of a cone. Um, and that is why I'm going to do a second one. <laughs> but you can always touch it up a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, as long as it's clean. Kind of like this, okay. And same thing, you can kind of highlight the top a little bit by just making very quick brush strokes um, that are a bit more firm at the top because you want to make the, the top of the cylinder stand out a little more than the bottom here because usually there's um, in the perspective that you draw, um, compositionally, you want the, the highlight to be at the top or like at the closest um, to the viewer, basically, if you think about it in 3D. So that's why I'm going to make this a little more stand out. And the way the, the shadow works on a round surface is if the light comes from here, let's say, um, it's going to be also a gradient, but I'm going to indicate that just by two lines. And this line is going to be, or this shape is going to be filled with a middle value, and this right shape is going to be filled with a darker value. And this is enough to kind of indicate, okay, this is a round surface. It's going to, um, like, just wrap around those two ellipses or 
in, in three dimensions, it would be a circle um, in order to create the, the cylinder. Similarly, the cone um, works with one cylinder and then um, basically two lines that connect to the tip. And then you just have a shadow going from the tip similarly to the bottom and you can shape a uh, shade in those two areas, dark and light. And you have a, a cone. You can touch up the lines a little bit, kind of like this. But that's already it. The reason why I'm putting so much emphasis on 3D forms is because if you think about most products, they are an accumulation of 3D forms. They're stacked together or it's um, a subtraction. So there might be, let's say if there's a hole in the cylinder, um, for example, right here, it is basically just another cylinder that is um, subtracted from the form um, in another like direction, basically. So um, the reason why we do this is to understand the 3D forms in their basic form. Um, and then can go towards more complex forms simply by combining them, manipulating them a little bit, and you already have um, a more complex shape that can already be um, a product. So this is going to be the basic exercise, and now I'm going to manipulate the cube a little bit to make that a little more clear what I mean by that. So usually products don't have sharp edges um simply for security reasons but also for um for safety reasons but also for aesthetic reasons obviously so um how do i draw let's say a fillet uh, which is a rounded corner or a chamfer which is an angled kind of like cut off corner so this is a cube it's not um 100 right now but it's good enough um let's do the same thing for this one again Kind of like this. So in order to round the corners, you want to imagine which edge is going to be or around the edges, um, which edge is going to be rounded. So I'm going to put this one um, and this one and this one and this one. Basically, this one you can't really see, um, but it's still going to affect um, the way the product looks or the cube looks in this case. Um, so that's why we need to imagine this, this edge being on the back side of the cube. Um, so if this has to be rounded, um, you kind of want to imagine how, how much it's going to be rounded. And then you can draw on, on this plane, you can draw the radii for how much it's going to be rounded, kind of like this. And now you project that on the other side, obviously you're not going to see it as much, but on this corner, you're going to see it the most. And what's going to happen here is because the radii or oh, the radius here is taking off a little bit of the corner, you're going to see the edge being a little back. So it's going to end here and then kind of curve in like this. And it's going to make the product look a bit smaller than the actual cube, although the sides are still the same. Um, but what you're just going to do here is draw it like this and a little curved. Um, and then what you also can do to highlight the, the rounded edges a little bit, you can draw them lightly and kind of connect the edges of the radius like this. And now you have a much more friendly looking form that almost looks already like a product, like a box or like a very simple electronic product. Um, if you draw a couple details, we can even go ahead and, I don't know, um, draw like a parting line right here. And then, I don't know, indicate a lock, kind of like this, and it's already a box. So um, it's not really a, a big step from the basic geometry to um, the product itself. So um, that's why it's so important to understand the, the basic geometrical forms that are out there. Um, oh, I forgot the sphere, I just realized. Um, 
Yeah, the sphere is not as important because in the like pure form, it's not that present in products as like a cube or a cylinder or a cone, um, but it's still worth um, discussing really quickly. So the sphere is a bit different um, in the way it's constructed on the page. Um, it's a circle and then you kind of indicate this rounded shadow on the bottom and you can indicate a highlight as well. So you can kind of shade in um, the shadow. And again, the, the light source, which I usually do, is coming from the top left. And then to make it even a bit more realistic, you can kind of draw a shadow on the ground and shade that in as well, um, simply to indicate that it's not floating in the air and that it's a 3D object sitting on the ground, kind of like this. Awesome. So for the next one, um, it's not a rounded corner, but we're going to fill it the edges. I'm going to champ for the edges, which is basically just cutting them in a 45 degree angle, which you can similarly to the radii, you can just indicate with four lines like this. And then you can do it on the same on the other side. It's a bit tricky to figure out um, where exactly the line here is going to end up. And to help you that, uh, like doing that, you can draw it very lightly, draw the lines that are not seen on the cube, kind of like this, um, just to give you this plane on the back side that you can't really see. And then you can draw in these lines like this, and then you can, can connect each of the, the endpoints of those lines where you want the form to be. So let's say this is the, definitely the most dominant one similar to the first one. And then this one is another one. I do not get you confused. I'm going to erase this one again. Something like this. And then just to define the product a bit more, you can just go over it again with heavier lines, similar to this. All right, and there we have a, a bit more sharp um, box. Wow, it's already 4 p.m. I'm so sorry. If you can stay a little longer, that's perfectly fine. If you have to jump off, um, I'm just going to keep going, and I'm going to jump to a little bit of a concept page layout, but I'm going to show you quickly why it's so important um, to do this exercise with the shapes. And because if you understand the shapes, you really set up for um, product sketching already because it's basically just adding and manipulating shapes. That's how I think about it most of the time. And this is a good example here. It's a hairdryer. Um, and you can already see um, having those geometric forms and shape what I'm talking about. So basically, it's just a combination of um, cylinders that are in different directions. So the first one is horizontally, um, and then the second one is vertically, and they kind of just intersect here. Um, obviously, the form is a little more complex, but once you have that basic form, and um, the reason why I have this here a little faded out is to draw over it. Um, if you have the basic form, you can think of this as, like I said, two cylinders, and you can even sketched a straight line like this. And then the second one is vertical. And I like, let's put it like this. And if you have that, you have the basic form of the hairdryer. That's how simple the product actually is. And the only difference is that the, the corners or the, the, the edges on the outside are rounded a little bit like this, as you can see in the shape. And then this is also a fillet, same thing as on the, the cube, but because it's um, two cylinders intersecting, it's a very like uniform surface that's created. So if you think about it, um, this is basically just a fillet kind of like this um, that is combining the two basic geometric forms. And then you can play around a little bit. Obviously, this is curving out a little bit to make it a little more comfortable to hold. Um, but this is already in hairdryer. 
So that's how simple most of the products are. And once you, once you have that understanding, you can observe. I think observation is, as with um, any other drawing, is the most important um, skill to, to master when it comes to product sketching. And if you if you think about the geometric shapes in products, you're gonna keep seeing these um, wherever you go. So a phone is basically just a flat cube, a flat rectangle shape. And this chair, for example, is the same thing. It's just an accumulation of different geometric forms. Obviously, there are other products like my pencil sharpener that are a little more complex. You can see it right here. Um, but it is, again, it's just a cylinder that is rounded at the top. So it's a combination of a cylinder and a sphere that is a little ind indented. And um, that's kind of how I think about product sketching and how I can manipulate forms. If I want to sketch some different things, I just add or subtract other geometric forms or like here at a party line that makes the comp um, the shape a little more complex um yeah and you have a have a product oh dang. <laughs> all right i don't know Zoe. If, do we have to stop or should i just keep going because it's a recording i don't know how you are how you guys are on time um you know, a little bit too much in the beginning <laughs> Yes, um, so it kind of goes for everyone. If you would like to stay on, that would be great. But I have to ask Sebastian, are you a host? Because I do have yeah. to go. Yeah, if you can make me a host, that's totally fine. I will just keep going for another 10 minutes um, and talk a little bit about composition. Um, but then I have to jump off as well. Awesome. So you are now the host and awesome. Uh, last call for everyone, um, if you're interested in the physical production of your product, so today sketch with Sebastian to figure out what your design is, tomorrow come see Ovadia to uh, model that out, and then on Wednesday come see me and we can make that something in reality. Um, with all that being said, thank you for coming, it was lovely to see you all, see you next time. Bye, awesome. thank you Sebastian. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. All righty. Um, so I'm going to jump into markers um, for the final thing, um, simply because I didn't touch on that yet, and we kind of ran out of time a little bit. I'm sorry if I got stuck a little bit, but um, we kind of kept talking and talking. So yeah, um, what I have here is Copic markers. Um, it's just one of many brands that you can use. Um, here I have a toned gray, which is on the warmer side, and then I have the same set, um, just different um, hues, like different different shades, um, as a cool gray. The reason for that is because oftentimes, if you have a product in a warm gray, the shadows are going to be the cool, and the other way around, because the light, um, that's kind of how light and shadow uh, works in the re in the real world. If you have a cool product most of the times the shadow is going to be um, warm. Um, it just makes it a little more realistic. And that's why I have those two shades, um, toned gray or warm, warm gray even, which goes a little bit into the brownish um, tone and then cool gray. I'm going to keep it to cool right now. And I think we're going to sketch a, sink, a simple cup, like a to-go cup. So. Usually what I do, I start with the pencil as well, um, but you can also use ballpoint pen, but sometimes depending on the, on the shape, uh, on, the, on the brand or whatever, or like on the, on the ink, whatever medium you use, um, the marker is gonna, gonna make it bleed a little bit. You can see that with the pencil as well, it's gonna make it a little bit muddy, but uh, the more careful you are, the, the less it matters. So I'm just gonna draw real quick. A very basic uh, form. This kind of little rounded cylinder, um, kind of like this, and then we have a top, um, which is rounded but a little more, kind of like this. And then to make it a little more inter interesting, there's this indentation basically going going to the inside and then we have um because it's a coffee cup we have this like 
thing around it um, that keeps your hands safe and prevent burning. All right. So as you can see, um, the perspective is not the best. It's not 100% in perspective. Um, I think this is a little off, but it doesn't really matter as long as it's close enough and you can understand what I just drew. Um, and I think the shading is going to be a little more accurate and makes makes it a little more believable than this. But it doesn't have to be 100%, especially if it's as quick as this. Um, yes, just to um, make you a little more comfortable. I'm going to use a 20% um, gray right now just to keep the first, um, like to, to put the first layer on. And what I usually do, I'm drawing, like I, I explained before, I'm drawing those lines that indicate where the shadow will go. And then I kind of continue that uh, throughout the product. And kind of because it's um, going inwards, if the light comes from this side, um, it's going to like create this shadow on the inside here, and then it's going to continue on the outside. So that's how I'm going to draw it. So I'm just going to shape this in. Again, very quick strokes. Um, don't spend too much time in one area. Um, you don't need to fully saturate the paper. Um, same thing right here. And that's um, already much better than, than the original sketch. I think it looks much more um, 3D and believable and a, a bit more interesting simply because there's a little bit of color and a little bit of um, alternation because of the different media I use, um, sketch and marker. And that's going to make it a little bit more sophisticated. To touch it up a little bit more, I'm going to jump into a C5, 50% gray. Damn. Um, I just refilled this and you can see it was a bit too much. So since it's a sketch page, cool. So just to make it a little more rounded, you can even take the shading a little bit. <laughs> Sorry, you can take it a little bit further and um, do the, the outside um, a little bit darker as well. And um, what I'm going to do as well, I'm going to go to the other side because usually if it's a rounded object, it's going to throw a little shadow on the other side as well, kind of like so, um, just to balance the composition a little bit because it was so heavy on one side um, that I thought it needed a little bit more um, just weight, visual weight on the other side. Cool. To make it a little more interesting and to um, indicate some different materials and like some different color too. I'm going to go in with my warm gray and just color in some some of the areas that I didn't touch yet. But it doesn't have to do anything with shading right now. Um, but more with like um, the color of the material and the feature of the product that I'm using. So um, because it's going to throw a little bit um, of shadow. I want to keep this area. Um, so I'm just going to outline it with the dark color and then go in with a lighter color to kind of indicate a different material, kind of like this. And then I can go in with the toned gray one, 10%, and just kind of color it in a slit, like so. Yeah, so this would be the, the like hero sketch of the page, but now you don't really understand yet how the product is working. So what if there was another sketch um, that explains the lid in a bit more detail and another sketch that kind of sees how this part comes off? To, to, to indicate that, I'm just going to draw this shape a bit smaller again, um, kind of like this. And then I'm going to have the ring kind of come off to the bottom. Um, so I'm going to draw it a bit more down um, below. And you can kind of indicate that with like some, some arrows. So it's going to come off like this.
kind of like this. And obviously now you wouldn't see this line anymore in real life, but I think it helps it to understand that this is um, a different part and it doesn't belong to the shape um, as one single thing. And uh, same with the line on the back. So I think it helps to understand, okay, this is two separate parts that are then combined um, to the cup. What you still can do is you can highlight the visible parts, make them a bit darker, um, just to give a little bit more understanding of how the actual thing looks. And then you can give it a wall thickness maybe too, kind of like this. And then you can draw the lid, uh, lid separately and say, okay, um, this is actually a lid that is pushed. Um, you could indicate that in the big um, sketch as well, um, but just to make it a bit more interesting and fill the page, you can go ahead and draw it separately and have this like big arrow indicating that this would be a pushed feature, kind of like this. And this, obviously, it's not the most beautiful page, but this is already enough. And you can kind of see a hierarchy of um, visual weight. So the, the big complete product is the biggest. Ignore that for a second. <laughs> and then um, you can kind of add some annotations as well. It's kind of like lid, um, sleeve. to touch it up a little more. And that's already enough to create a concept page that kind of creates this um, very easy to understand um, product and explains it to someone who might not be as familiar with the concept behind the product, but because of the annotations and because of the explanations on the page can clearly understand um, what it is that is depicted. Um, maybe in the corner, you can add a title, let's say coffee cup, Coffee to go. Cup. Oh, <laughs> Cup. And that's already it. And then I usually sign it on the bottom right and add the date. All right. I think we're good to go. Thank you for um, viewing this. And what is it? <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> Uh, I loved it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you want to see my green cup? <laughs> Wait, I'll stop the recording. <laughs> if that's possible, I don't know if that's possible. You have to touch the cloud on the left, top left. There's going to be a cloud that says recording, I think. No, I think we just because I'm the co-host, I can't do that. Oh. Um, Anyways, well, well, thank you for coming. I, I um, did a green cup. Nice. Awesome. <laughs> Looks awesome. <laughs>